Greetings and welcome to Vanderbilt University School of Nursing's Informatics 101. I'm Patty Singstack and I'm the director of the Nursing Informatics program here at the School of Nursing. And I'm Alvin Jeffrey. I'm a postdoc fellow with the Department of Veterans Affairs and also on faculty here at the School of Nursing. And I'm Mary Lauren Benton. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Biomedical Informatics at Vanderbilt University. And we are very glad you are here today because you are the expert for the topic that we're covering today on genomics, a topic that um, I'm going to just confess I am not an expert in. Um, and so, and I know it's an emerging competency in the world of informatics, so we'd like to pick your brain a little bit on what it is and why informaticists should even care about it. But we like to, we like to start this kind of thing with a, um, with a definition. So I think we have a definition of uh, Always genomics. Always with a definition right here. <laughs> so genomics, this is exciting. Are you ready I for am this? ready. So ready. Read it. <laughs> it's an interdisciplinary field of biology focusing on the structure, function, evolution, mapping, and editing of genomes. I think I only understood like four of those words, but a genome is an organism's complete set of DNA, deoxyribonucleic <laughs> acid, in, uh, including all of its genes. In contrast to genetics, which refers to the study of individual genes and their roles in inheritance, Genomics aims at the collective characterization and quantification of genes, which direct the production of proteins with the assistance of enzymes and messenger molecules. I think I had flashbacks to undergrad uh, okay. biology. <laughs> the only word I can think of after you read that was help. help. Well, luckily so, we have so, an expert to help us today. Yes, it's genomics. Can you give us the easy version? And, and I know this is probably very difficult because I know when most people probably describe it, they're at a chalkboard or there's some great graphics or something. So we're just asking you to articulate it. So this will be a challenge. <laughs> sure. So when I think about genomics, what I think about is we talked about DNA, but it's sort of like the code or like the book of life, I think I've heard it called. <laughs> so if you think about um, instructions in a cell, all of the instructions are contained in the DNA, and you can make proteins out of that, and you can turn genes on and off. And genomics is really just a study of that book as a whole. Like a cookbook? Like you're making a recipe? Kind of like a cookbook. Okay. <laughs> you just never know how it's going to turn out. It's sort of well, like a choose your own adventure. Oh, <laughs> okay. That never works well for me <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> so, what's the difference between genomics? Is it genomics or is it genomics? Genomics. Genomics, thank you. And what's the difference between that and genetics? Can you help us understand that a little sure. bit more? So when we talk about genetics, we're really talking about the study of genes, something that usually codes for a protein, and you're really thinking about one gene at a time and kind of looking at how those are inherited or passed down through families. So real specific. Real specific. Okay. When we talk about genomics, we're talking about all of the DNA, the whole cookbook, if you will, as a mm -hmm. whole, and we're studying it as one big entity rather than one piece at a time. Ah, okay, okay. So how does informatics play a role in that discrepancy, or why has genomics become such a big deal for those of us in informatics? Informatics is huge in genomics because when you think about the human genome, which we sequenced only very recently, I saw a great picture one time that they actually took every base pair and they printed them out in an actual book and put them in binders and put them in a bookshelf and it covered floor to ceiling an entire bookshelf just one person's genome oh. so when you think about trying to read and understand something like that that's so much information that using tools in informatics or computer science will help us understand something that we can't just look at um, and understand so you're saying we couldn't put it say in an excel spreadsheet Right. <laughs> You'd crash your computer very quickly if you tried to put it in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And as the data nerd in the group over here in the informatics program, I, I think that's fascinating that something so small that you can't even see with the naked eye actually is so much data that you can't even put it in an Excel spreadsheet. And I think, I think that's just fascinating. So it's about managing the data and the information because it's just so vast and huge at this point. Right. Okay. How, how do you, so genetic expression in an electronic health record, 
or EHR. What what are we starting to see in, with that? What are we starting to see? You know, how are they getting integrated into the electronic health record, and how are they being used? Sure. So, usually, what's been done in the past and what people are working on now is within your genome, within your side of DNA, people have all different kinds of variants. And we're really interested in how these small changes in the DNA, maybe one single base pair, one single letter um, of DNA that's changed, how those things associate with diseases or with changes in gene expression. So we're really, we can test for specific changes in a patient genome, and that might make you, um, might be associated with a higher risk for, say, breast cancer or a higher risk for mm -hmm. heart disease. And those are the kinds of things that are tested for and end up in a medical record. You know, the other things I've seen as you ask about the EHR is here at Vanderbilt we have this project called or program called PREDICT. And mm -hmm. so not just finding diseases, but also knowing that some medications, I guess, react differently inside the body for different people. And so rather than the previous way of just guessing, oh, we're going to put you on this blood thinning medication that could cause you to bleed spontaneously and we'll just hope that we got the right dose, we can actually be a little more, you know, preventative and saying, oh, you have a particular genetic difference that could mm -hmm. say we need a different dose for you. Um, and we can do that for a number of medications and I think that's a big area of research. So definitely. Yeah. So for example, if I were if I were entering an order for a blood thinner of some kind, I might be presented with some kind of a maybe an alert or a reminder to check the genetic expression of this patient for that particular um, gene. Absolutely. And then if they express it a certain way, we might want to alter the dose. Mm -hmm. Is that a straightforward way of understanding yeah. that? Right. And if you've had it done once, at least in certain programs, you know, you may only get sequenced once, and so all of your variants are stored in the electronic health record. So maybe even though you order a blood thinner this time and you check the, the, the see if the patient has any differences in a future medication that you um, are also ordering, since you already have that information on file in the electronic, it can go ahead and tell you, actually, we've previously done a study, this patient also has this difference, and so you could dose it differently or maybe even stay away from a medication altogether. Have either one of you ever done 23andMe or Ancestry.com? I have not. I'm scared to. I haven't yet, but I, I'm thinking that's my Christmas present for my I, family. I haven't either. <laughs> well, I'm thinking, you know, how are patients going to get involved in this? Because when they, and I don't know enough about either one of those companies um, to know if they give you any kind of information about predictions about their health, but I imagine if they're not, that's probably on the horizon. Does anyone know? So that is something that they've thought about doing and they've tried to do. I think understanding how your genetics or how your DNA relates to disease or your risk for different health outcomes is really tricky. So these kind of consumer companies can't say a whole lot about your health, um, but they can tell you a lot about where you come from mm -hmm. and your ancestry, which I think is a big pull for people trying to learn more about their families and their history. Mm -hmm. So why is it tricky? And what are our kind of next big challenges that we're facing? Sure. It's tricky, one, because there's so much information there and encoded in this DNA. And what it does and how, um, how it actually works is something we don't really understand. We understand specific genes and how those can code for proteins. We understand that some variants um, are cause different diseases. But even until recently, we thought that a very large proportion of the genome was junk DNA. And we didn't think it did anything important. And in the last probably five to 10 years, we've realized, no, there's a lot more mm. happening. There's a lot of regulation and changes in the way that the genes are turned on and off is almost as important, if not more important, than what the genes do themselves. Mm. So there's just a lot of open research in this area about how your genetics actually relate to disease. I imagine that the, this is, it's, it's not, probably not the final frontier, but it's one of those frontiers that has so much ahead of it, so much to learn. And I know that Vanderbilt has a Center for Precision Medicine. Mm -hmm. Are you involved in that in any way? I'm actually not involved in that um, specifically, mm -hmm. but I think that 
the way genetics play into precision not medicine yet, maybe. is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Well, I know that, that the, the project they're doing called All of, All of Us, I believe. Us. Do I have that right? All yes. of Us? They are asking for volunteers. They want to get a million volunteers mm -hmm. to uh, answer you know, a lot of questions about their health and their habits. And um, I don't know, maybe they take a blood sample as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when they get a million, I, and I think they're already starting this, they're, they're looking at all kinds of different research questions to, to ask of the data. And I think it's going to be amazing to follow that. So I think, you know, from an informaticist perspective, I think that following the work that's happening now is something that's going to be really important. You know, so, so taking this to, you know, you know this, the intent of these presentations that we do are about, you know, Nurse, and, nurse informaticists and what we should be looking for, what we should be thinking about. So I think following what's happening through um, the Precision Medicine Initiative, um, as well as Vanderbilt's uh, Center for Precision Medicine will be important. Are there other things that, as a uh, nurse informaticist, are there other things that they should be thinking about or looking up or resources or things you can think that might be helpful for them? Like if you could wave a magic wand to yeah. put you on the spot and okay. say, I wish, because the work you do is super complex to those of us that are lay people to genomics, what would you hope that maybe all clinicians, nurses, physicians, whatever, might learn in school or um, what would be that kind of base level of, man, I just wish they would know these couple of things. That would be really helpful in helping my research work actually influence practice. I think. That's a really good question. I think probably the best thing for nurse informaticists or clinicians um, to understand is how, um, one, how Im important genetics is for human health and our, the traits that we're interested in, the traits that you're treating in a hospital setting, um, but also kind of the level of complexity and uncertainty surrounding these mm -hmm. things. I think that um, as a clinician or somebody who's treating patients, you really want um, easy and simple answers because it's nice to say, well, if you have this one difference in your DNA, then that means I should give you a drug A instead of drug B. But sometimes it's not that simple. Um, and so understanding that there is a range of, of complexity there and that drug A might be a little bit better than drug B in some situations and not all. Just using the genetics as a puzzle piece that fits into their larger intuition, I think would be the biggest takeaway. I love it. That actually reminds me of an example I forgot that I had. Um, one of my friends is a, he's a postdoc fellow in bioethics and he mm -hmm. studies how we communicate genetic results to patients. And he studies variants of unknown significance. So there's things that we know that is a difference, like you're, you're it's a genetic variant that, that is different from most of the population, but we don't know what it means. We just know that it's a little different. And so patients have actually had, for example, organs removed. Uh, they got a surgeon to agree to remove an organ because it was related somewhat to potential disease. And it was later then downgraded to not actually be at risk for cancer or harm. And so he'll interview these patients to say, you know, what went through your head? And I, I find it fascinating that, you know, we as clinicians may say, oh, it's a variant of unknown significance. And we have this, this worry about risk of disease. Mm -hmm. And so we go ahead and act. But I think you bring up a good point that there's so much uncertainty and unknown in the field right now. Right. I think there's a lot of a lot of power and a lot of information in this field, but I think it's just one piece of what a clinician does every day, and one piece of their intuition, and not the not the entirety of it. Yeah, I think there's a I think there's still a lot to learn. I think that you know, I think that as clinicians in, in the world of informatics, I think we need to understand probably almost like going, I like to go back to basics sometimes, you know, and just understanding the base pairs and how they work and how DNA turns into RNA, turns into a protein. I feel like, you know, we need to understand that, you know, better, make sure we have a really good understanding of that. And then how the representation of variance and genetic expression can be in an electronic health record. I think that's something that it's a competency that's emerging, and I think that we need to just kind of keep paying attention to that and, and make sure that we're you know on that on that cutting edge and and keep up with that information. 
And I think one last thing as far as this EHR interaction where nurse informaticists can help, I think one reason we have uncertainty is so we can measure the variance or the structure of an individual's DNA, but getting out what problems they have in the electronic health record can be really challenging. And right now we're kind of stuck with billing codes for a lot of our studies. Mm -hmm. So really what we say when we make when we say that this gene is affiliated with this disease, it's really this gene is affiliated with this billing code. Right. We're not actually pulling out at the core what's wrong with the patient. And so I think as, as nurse informaticists that are okay. saying, how are we structuring this data? How are we standardizing it? We can really set ourselves up for doing better studies in the future. And we haven't even touched on, nor do we have time to, talk about some of the ethical considerations, right. uh, which are also huge. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, uh, I'd like to wrap us up a little bit because there's so, I mean, we could spend hours probably yeah. cutting into <laughs> RNA, DNA, all these other NAs. Uh, but uh, what I heard was that genetics versus genomics. Genetics is the specific kind of individual, what genes you have, and genomics is the whole thing and how it kind of all comes together. And you said switching things on and off and regulation, and I will have to save that for round two. Uh, and that it's important in informatics, or informatics is necessary because there's so much data, and you just can't keep it all on a bookshelf or a spreadsheet. Uh, and then I think one of my takeaways is the amount of uncertainty is still really high, and so we need to be cautious, whether it's for ethics or decision-making or whatever, and so there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, and I'll go back to the definition saying it's interdisciplinary, the fact that we've talked about ethics, biologists, informaticists, uh, computer scientists, the nurses, the physicians, it's going to take all of us, I think, and all of us. Ah, <laughs> no, that was I, didn't, good. I didn't mean to do that. that. <laughs> I'll be here all day, folks. So, Mary Lauren, thank you so much for entertaining us and uh, answering our questions. Uh, and thank you for uh, joining us. We uh, hope you learned a few things uh, in this segment. Please share the video with your colleagues via email or social media. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please contact us at the link below. And until next time. Thank you.